Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Just give me a little thumbs up or a nod. Fantastic. Sometimes my microphone is a little wonky. Yes. Uh, welcome to uh, Slow Art Friday. Uh, we have uh, these programs every week. My name is Christy McMillan. I'm the Director of Learning and Engagement here at the Asheville Art Museum. And I'm joined by my colleague, Doris Potash, who's one of our master docents, who she'll be leading the conversation this afternoon. Each Friday at 12 p.m. while the museum is closed, docents lead virtual interactive conversations about a few artworks in our collection or special exhibitions. The goal is simple, slow down, discover the joy of looking at art, and talk about the experience with others. For today's program, Doris will lead us in an interactive conversation about three artworks in our collection. We'll spend about 15 minutes or so with each one. Doris will allow us time to look at each artwork on our own, slowly, before leading a conversation about each one with questions. As participants, we encourage you to engage in dialogue with Doris, myself, and each other throughout the hour. A few things to note before we get started. Um, you probably noticed as you got logged in that your microphones and video were muted by default. Uh, there will come a time very shortly when you'll be able to unmute your microphone. Choose a quiet room and close the door. Silence alerts from any nearby devices. They can be very distracting if they're beeping uh, while you're talking. Try not to sit in front of a window, lamp, or other strong light source if you choose to share your video. It just makes it so that it's hard to see you. Use headphones and microphone for best sound quality. While you can log in using your smartphone, we do recommend using a desktop, laptop, or tablet to see slides and meeting tools on a larger screen. Make sure that your screen name includes your first name and last initial or your first name and last name. That way we know who you're, you're talking to. During the program to ask questions or make comments, unmute your microphone when the moderator asks for questions or comments. <clears throat> You can also type any questions or comments that you have into the chat box. A third way is to raise your hand in the participant sidebar. Doris will call on you and will unmute your microphone. I can say that the pace of these conversations though usually makes it so that folks with a raised hand are waiting for a while. So please feel free to unmute yourself and make your comment. We are recording. If you prefer not to be recorded, please make sure that your video and audio remain muted and use the chat box to submit questions and comments. At this time, I'm going to make it so that folks can mute or unmute yourselves at will. We do recommend that if you're not actively asking a question or making a comment, that you leave your microphone muted. At this point, does anybody have any questions before we get started? All right, Doris, take it away. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I, can no, I never know whether I'm muted or unmuted. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But um, welcome everyone. I'm so delighted to see that we have people from outside of Asheville today. So that's um, really interesting for me. Um, and so welcome. Um, I'm going to be sharing three artworks by women artists this afternoon. And um, I hope you will enjoy them as much as I do. And uh, as Christy said, I encourage you all to jump into the conversation to share your interpretations. So Christy, uh, do you want to uh, put the first one up, please? Great, thank you. I'm gonna give you all about 10 seconds to just take a look at this photograph. There's a lot of detail in here. So we're gonna talk about some of that. So just let your eye move over the whole photograph. So what's going on here? I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you. It, it, <laughs> I, I, I see a woman playing. This is Patty. I'm. I see a man and a woman playing cards. The man. Okay. 
uh, the man is uh, engaged. The woman seems to be um, not so much engaged. Okay, Patty, um, man and woman playing cards, but talk about what you see in that photograph that um, led you to the conclusion that the man is more engaged than the woman. Um, his body language, he's leaning forward um, towards the woman. So his, and his hand, he looks like he's about to pick a card out of his hand. Okay. So his body language uh, indicates engagement. What about the, the someone else want to jump in on that? A little bit about the men, men and the woman, their expressions, what, how you might interpret that? And the woman looks a little to either to be frustrated or disgusted or tired. I mean, clearly there's some drinking and smoking going on there as well as some eating and uh, she, her hand is down, her cards are down and she looks down. Okay, so the, that, that whole downness of the woman in her posture would uh, lead you to believe that she's kind of tired or disgusted or not as engaged as, as Patty was saying. Uh, we also noticed the drinking and the smoking and the, uh, the, the eating. Can you tell what it is that's in that bowl? Looks like peanuts. Yeah, it looks like peanuts. What else do you notice about the photograph? I can't tell the little pictures on the wall, but clearly there, there, there's power pictures, I believe, up there. Um, I, I can't make out what all the little ones are on the left and right, though. Okay, right behind the figure of the woman on the wall, there are a lot of, of pictures, look like photographs tacked up on the wall, a lot of small ones that um, is kind of difficult, I think, on the, the computer screen to discern what they are. What about the larger one? Malcolm yeah, larger X. Malcolm X. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also think the lighting is very interesting. Okay, what do you think is um, particular, of particular interest about the lighting? Say a little more about that. Such a strong light source above. It's just so bright. It's kind of a, like the cone illuminating them. Mm -hmm. So you see that, that, that light really focused down on that table and on those, those two characters, very stark lighting. Okay, I'm, I'm having difficulty. If that's Gary, I can't hear you. I can hear you're saying something, but it's kind oh. of garbled. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> and now he left. <laughs> Pretty nice landscape. Is that better? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll talk a little bit louder. I like the Gary, I think we need to turn your turn your head, it, it moves your mouth away from the microphone, and that's why we can't hear you. Uh, the microphone is on my mm. ear. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave. Go ahead, Billy. Uh, the, the light is, my observation is the light is so harsh, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Uh, ah. Yeah, so how do I feel? How would I feel if I was sitting at that table in that room? I wouldn't feel comfortable. I might feel a little choked by the smoke, even though I'm a <laughs> smoker. Uh, but uh, th this is, uh, it, it, it's almost an interrogating kind of light. Okay, sort of like in those film noir detective movies, yes. when you have that, that lamp right over the, yes, the table the and the interrogator is, is there. Yeah. Plus his arm and her hand are lit up, which is interesting. And um, because of where the lamp is placed, it, it brings you your focus to um, Malcolm X to his finger. And I think this is another example of a picture that if it was in color, would not have the same dramatic effect as the black and white does. Okay, so hearing a few things. First, the gesture of Malcolm X and, and kind of that, that, that pointing and how that creates that line. And, uh, and then the, 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 um, the other comment about being in black and white um, and um, having a different effect in black and white than it, than it would be in color in, in terms of that intensity. And uh, Gary says, thank you, Gary, for um, your typing in your comment that it, it, um, while this photograph was taken in 1990, that Gary is saying it, um, 
it looks like um, the, the, the black and white makes it look like it, it came from another era. Yes, so I'd, I'd like to say something if I can. Sure. Oh, it's Janet. Um, the, I, the light uh, fixture is really fascinating and I find very often in art uh, light like that is symbolic of like the eye of God, you know, looking uh, down into the, the picture and I thought that was kind of interesting given the context here because of course Malcolm X was a minister in, of the Nation of Islam, etc. But it also I think might it's interesting someone said it was harsh I kind of see it as a protective thing that uh, it's protecting these people who are who are um, working for social justice and uh, sometimes they they can feel defeated and and feel that their efforts are, are not being rewarded um, but that somebody is looking out for them up there oh, that's interesting so are you then in, um, saying that you feel that because of the photograph of Malcolm X that uh, that would indicate that they're, they're, they might be working for social justice um, and not that not a random poster that they that they chose oh, yeah. to, to I think, put on their wall. Yeah, I think for sure. And although I can't tell uh, exactly what those pictures are, they do look like they're groups of people. So it seems to me maybe it's at, at, a, at a march or at a demonstration or, or something like that, perhaps. Yeah, thanks, Janet. Um, uh, Gary's also pointing out, in addition to Malcolm X, kind of pointing that the the way that the woman is is holding her cigarette, it's kind of pointing in that same direction. So again, that kind of gives you that visual. I mean, I'm pointing at the picture, which you obviously can't see, but it gives you that um, that 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 visual line of of um, you know from her hand to his finger to to the to the light. What about the, what, we talked about the fact that they were eating um, and, and drinking and smoking. Those particular elements, do you see any symbolism in that at all? Well, I also just noticed that they're playing cards. I, and, I hadn't noticed yeah. that before. And, and, and she's not holding her cards. Right. Yeah, she's got her cards yeah. face down on I'm the seeing, table. Yeah. I'm seeing a narrative there here. Um, she seems discouraged uh, about whatever is going on. And he seems to try to um, build her up a little bit by, by trying to engage her in, in an evening of uh, relaxation with a drink and playing cards. And it's not working. You know, she's discouraged about whatever is happening. And I think the picture in the back says there are big things happening in the world or, or in her life that um, are upsetting to her. And... Yeah. Um, and he's there trying to um, give her moral support and, and distract her from whatever is, is upsetting her in her life. Yeah, so interesting. So you're a... seeing it as, as beyond the, the card game and, and really being overall discouraged. Gary, Gary also is noticing um, the, uh, the hand um, that's being played, the hand of cards that's being played there. <laughs> Um, that might be giving her some discouragement as well, I guess. I don't know. I have a different read on her. If you look closely at her mouth, she almost is smirking. I think mm -hmm. she is having a little bit of fun, and maybe she just lost this round. Um, she seems a little bit more playful to me than being discouraged or beaten down or tired. Um, it looks to me as if it's two people who know each other well who are having a little fun competition. Oh, okay. So again, seeing this, you're seeing this more as, um, as, as being very literal. It, it is a card game. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and she's maybe smirking or smiling a little bit at her, um, her bad hand, maybe, because she has her cards face down. Mm -hmm. hey, Doris? Yes. Doris, can I uh, Yes. I just wanted to say something also about the composition of the photograph. Please. Um, one of the things I, I, I notice here that's, and I've never seen this before, so I'm really fascinated by it, is, is the, the verticality of the images, right? You've got the, 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 the pictures that are lined up there. You have their arms that are interestingly almost in the same position that the arms, you have the, the decoration on the, on the um, door, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's um, vertical, and then of course the bottle and the glasses, mm -hmm. but then that's kind of interrupted and or softened by the, 
the lamp, the roundness of the lamp, and also the roundness of the bowl. So um, I thought that was, mm -hmm. that was, I'm sure that was a, a real choice. The glasses. That uh, and the tops of the glasses, right? So even mm -hmm. though the glasses are vertical, they also have that that roundness to them too, which is fat, I thought was great. It's a yeah. great. Yeah. Question. So can I? Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. As the reflections in the bottle are very interesting too. You can kind of see the matchbook there, and it's just and again the bottle pointing up towards the light and. Because it's been somewhat consumed, it's not full, but then you get those reflections there in the liquid as well as the top part of the body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So can I, um, can I surmise from those couple of comments about the composition that you may feel that this was a, a staged photograph as opposed to a candid shot? You know, I'm not, I don't know that it's staged, but you know, uh, I would assume that a photographer takes, you know, lots and lots of images, click, 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 and that it was deliberately, uh, this one was deliberately chosen. I don't know that it was staged. I don't think so. Okay. Thanks. I think it's kind of ironic that Malcolm X is on the wall and they're drinking, smoking, and playing cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. That's great. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and I think as a photographer, that would have been what I saw, that the irony of the whole thing. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. 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 We're getting some, some comments what, both in both directions about whether, whether this was a sort of uh, arranged photograph or, or, or a candid shot. So I, uh, I don't know. I don't know uh, about this particular shot in terms of um, you know how many shots she took to, in order in order to get this. Um, I Doris, I may have yeah. missed. If, I may have missed if you said it. Who's the photographer? Uh, the photographer is Carrie Mae Weems, and oh, she's African. Okay. She's African American, yeah. and this is part of her kitchen table series. So she oh. did a whole series. Of photographs that are in a book um, that um, were taken in a similar setting, a kitchen setting, but with different characters. And what I thought was really kind of interesting and cool was that the female in this photograph is Carrie Mae Weems. So she I was going to say she often there. puts herself in in mm -hmm. her photographs. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The uh, the the uh, the man in the photograph is is one of her neighbors and a, a good friend of hers. Wow. And. Um, so, uh, you know, again, this is, um, I think you've, you've talked about a lot, a lot about the characters and the significance of the Malcolm X portrait there um, and, and kind of what they're doing and, and whether their, their gestures and body language and expressions have to do with just the game or with something more significant. And I can't answer those questions. <laughs> I think that's what's so great about this photograph is that in addition to the composition elements that you all pointed out, it's, um, it, it just really uh, is provocative in terms of uh, what it means. And, um, and I think a lot of it is in the eyes of, um, of us in our backgrounds and looking at it and interpreting it. And it might be very different. I'm not sure if there are any um, people of color um, today um, on, on our call, but it would be interesting to see if, if there was a different interpretation of that. Um, just one more question of you, of, of you um, before we move on to the next one, though. Since we are talking about all of our artists today are women, is there anything in particular about this photograph that you think is um, uniquely from a feminist perspective or a woman's perspective? Would a man, could a man have easily taken that? that same photograph. Well, um, perhaps because the, the image is focusing primarily on her, uh, it could be a gesture of saying that she is the most important uh, character between the two. It's almost like the the man is a bystander observing her. She is front and center. So um, I, I might see it as somebody, um, you know, if you're taking the photograph, that it is um, in, in thinking of it, that the woman is the front and center. So she's front and center, and that kind of makes it from the woman's perspective. What about the, the fact that the scene is a kitchen? 
um, usually, I don't know, I usually, and, and again, that might show my bias, but I, in my family, it's usually the women who are gathering in the kitchen and who kind of own the kitchen um, and that space. And so uh, maybe. I, um, I wouldn't typically expect to see uh, a woman playing cards, drinking scotch, mm -hmm. a cigarette. I mean, that's a pretty unusual uh, setting to see a woman. And I think by putting her there, she's bringing some level of, of equality to um, the woman in that situation. Interesting. Thank you. Any other comments on this one before we move on? I, I, think had, I, I had looked at the series, the kitchen table series before our conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that picture of Malcolm X, I don't see in any of the other photographs. So we were talking about whether it was purposely included here or not. Um, I don't see it in any of the other pieces in this series. Uh, it's, and this has more going on to it. I encourage everybody to take a look at this series because this has more going on in it as far as activity than any of the other photographs in this series. So it'd be interesting to study a little bit more. Great, thank Doris. you. Doris? Yes. Um, that particular light, uh, it reminds me of somebody being interrogated. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That harsh light um, kind of just hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. You can see the bulb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Any others before we move on? Okay. I, thought that, I thought that Marie wanted to say something. Yeah. Okay, Marie. Did you? What I just wanted to be able to um, to add is that um, I, as I've talked to many um, ladies who are older than, than than I am, that the um, the use of playing of cards or playing of any kind of game was a typical thing that was done. And um, I, I, I like with the understanding of the placement of the drink, that was not unusual for some women to be able to do, but it certainly wasn't always the expected. It would have been something of a, a, a lighter potion as opposed to um, alcohol. So it is a very, I think um, it's a very interesting juxtaposition with um, the strength of a woman um, being placed um, next to a man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, Christy, next. Oh, okay, a little bit more about this. Carrie Mae Weems, this was from 1990. As we said, the print was uh, made in 1999. Okay. All right, take a few moments to look at this one. I love being a docent because I get to share all my favorite things. <laughs> I've never seen this. So it's new for some of you. Yes. Yes. So what's going on here? There's a lot going on. So what do you notice? What's happening? It has a butterfly look. It looks like it's a butterfly and it's symmetrical on either side. Well, it's not totally symmetrical. What is that? There are aspects that are very mm -hmm. similar. Okay, so a aspects of this that are that are that make it that are similar that make it appear symmetrical, and um, you also said Barbara that it looks like a butterfly. What is it that makes it look like a butterfly for you? What do you see? Well, at the very top there is uh, something that looks they're kind of curly for antenna, but also there's something about the shape and you know the body of the caterpillar where the main one main uh, character seems like the body of a caterpillar and the wings. I mean, of the wings of butterfly. Okay, so the very fine lines at the very, very top in the center uh, remind you of, of sort of like what a butterfly's antenna would look like, and then the 
the centerpiece you're saying kind of looks like the caterpillar body and the sides appear to be the wings coming out. What else do you notice? What other things um, or other interpretations? The first thing I see are the faces. That, that's what jumped out at me. The three okay. faces towards the, in this kind of the center, but up and then on either side. And so you wonder, are they related? How are, how, what are these, what's going, are these three different people? What's going on? Any thoughts about that? To answer, to answer your own question, Diane, or is there anyone else who would like to answer that question? What, what do you think the relationship, who are the people, these people? Clearly, my eye is drawn towards the center um, person with the, uh, the mouth open and the teeth and the eyes, and uh, but that's the more dominant person. And uh, it almost looks like a crown on the top. And the other two um, are look equal in stature, but smaller. Mm -hmm. So the and center I'll one might be a more dominant one because of the placement and the size then. Yes. Yeah, what else? Well, I, I, to elaborate on what Don was earlier said um, about the crown, I wonder if there is any kind of um, uh, regalness or royalty um, associated with it and tying in the main face that you see, if that is the, um, probably the king, and then the other two maybe children um, itself. That's, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm picking up from it. Okay, so again, another um, sort of feeling of that this might relate to some type of royalty because of those sort of crown shapes um, at the top. Much, much of Minnie Evans' work has a Rorschach look to it. So it's those are those of, shapes that those psychologists use that you're supposed to come up with a story about? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And the duplicate. You see, it's, it's almost as if she did one side, folded the page in half, and then pressed down and, and recreated uh, the same image. But on the other hand, they're, they're not the same image. But a lot of his, her work, and I'm not quite sure what influence caused that, but I know that that is typical of many of his work. Mm -hmm. So again, as, as was pointed out earlier, this, this sort of feeling of symmetry, even though it's not exactly a mirror image one side or the other, but it gives you that sense that, that mm -hmm. there's that similarity there. And notice as even with the butterfly, her, the hands look like claws. I mean, there's a lot of, of organic movement in the work that, that has that butterfly feel, but then those claws in the center. Okay, Christy, can you point out um, where what Billy might be referring to in the claws? Is it these green organic shapes that are kind of coming out there? Is that what you're referring to? That mm -hmm. yes. of claws? Mm -hmm. I feel that the oranges and the reds, the way the texture almost looks like a like fire, the way it's rising and going up, and um, you can sort of feel the texture of the oranges and the reds, where the the blues are more calming near the bottom. Yeah, so that that um, intensity of the orange and red, kind of reminding you of fire, but you've also got blues. A lot of she's I think got almost all those primary colors in there somewhere. Right. I'm trying to keep up with the chat box here. Um, the, the colors, um, uh, gradients of color, um, someone pointed out. So we have the different tones of, of color, uh, different gradients in here. Uh, it makes me want to color is one of the comments. Um, there are many uh, references uh, with these swirls here. Um, all over the, the, the work, but the two blue ones at the top, on either end of the top, kind of remind me of snails also is uh, lots of organic uh, things here in nature things, but snails have always kind of also been a symbol for the never ending uh, cycle of creativity and, and that the creative force goes on forever and ever. And you see that with all the swirls too. Okay, so there are a lot of swirls, so sort of spiral shapes that would indicate sort of this, um, like an infinity, uh, uh, reminding you of snails. So we've seen, heard of, we've heard snails, we've heard butterflies. Uh, to me, I, I think it almost looks like metamorphosis, which is what a caterpillar turning to a butterfly. And the central character, mm -hmm. I, she looks like a young girl. And the two older figures 
it kind of reminiscent of the wicked uh, queen in Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're like uh, like her mother and her future mother-in-law, and then it's like a coming of age kind of kind of thing. I don't know. Okay, so the whole idea of metamorphosis that this might be the, the that might be relatives kind of helping her or guiding her in her change, Barbara, is that? Yeah, um, uh, one of the other comments in the chat box was if you look on the bottom, the two blue shapes, um, sort of purplish blue shapes coming out remind um, the, the commenter of a, a whale's tail. So mm -hmm. another, um, another interesting um, reference to uh, nature, to animals, insects. Also, I see the fallopian tubes, the blue ones just above the whale could be fallopian tubes, and then the uh, female uh, sexual uh, vulva, uh, you know, yes. where the face is, and it could be the idea of birth or as metamorphosis. I mean, the two, I think the idea of the butterfly takes it away from being uh, negatively sexually, as, but much more positive about okay, rebirth so, of so self. Yeah, so, so birth in a, in a literal sense of, of birth of a human um, or, the, or a rebirth, a change maybe. Um, right, with that and, and birth of yourself, your own personality or, or strength of yourself. Ah, okay. What Looking else? at the ground again, it sort of looks like the two at the top, the smaller faces, each have their own crown virtue, by virtue of the green, but then it almost looks like there's a big across one huge crown for the uh the whole thing okay so yeah, yeah. so just the 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 um are you talking about like the huge crown being sort of coming out of the forehead of that larger face in the middle sort of purple yes coming out yeah 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 so again this whole reference to to crowns maybe to royalty what else it, it also looks to me like the two faces on the top are, and maybe even towards in the middle, they're different ages. The one on the right looks older, and then the other two look younger. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the ages might be different. So does that, how does that play into your interpretation? If at all, or is well, that just an whole observation? metamorphosis idea mm -hmm. that you know we're and, and from the um, uh, the butterfly emerges, you know, from the the caterpillar, uh, the caterpillar, then the, the butterfly emerges from the pupa, and then we emerge and we have all these different stages of life as women. Okay, so this, this again, this then would be the same person, different stages of the same person, yes, exactly. is that what you're saying? As opposed to exactly. different, um, different people in, in exactly. that person's yeah. life guiding them. I didn't make so, that very you know, clear, but yes. Yeah, no, no, you did. I just wanted to be sure I, and, I, and I was being correct. And, yeah, um, I do think it's the same person. Okay. Yeah. The, um, what about the, the background the, the, um, that the, the artist... Um, chose how would you describe that um what the what the artist chose to um do this work on the material brown well, paper yeah. drawing yeah it looks like yeah. cardboard it looks like cardboard looks like brown paper way it's rounded in the corners rounded in the corners how what, we, take a take a look at those upper corners and um and along the the um this side on the left Torn. Yeah, it looks like it's it's torn so, or worn, just worn. worn, rips and tears, creases in it. Well, yeah. you know, she she was kind of the consummate uh, outsider artist, and she worked uh, at Arley Gardens in Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, in the gatehouse, and that's where she did a lot of her work. And I'm familiar with that because we lived in Southport before we moved here. So I have seen quite a bit of her work. And I also was worked with the uh, Cameron Museum where a lot of her work is held. Uh, it, she was just, I mean, she would sit in this gatehouse, I guess, and uh, essentially doodle. And she used whatever it was that she had. 
she so like I say, she was kind of a consummate outsider artist, and she always said, I understand, uh, I didn't know her, but she always said that uh, she uh, was just recording the images of life that God was sending her. Oh. Mm -hmm. So she was very spiritually uh, inspired. Yeah, thank you, and Billy. Wilmington has a very interesting and rich history of African Americans as well. So she is a part of that whole culture. So um, outsider artist is basically an untrained artist, mm -hmm. and um, and she I understand the same thing, Billy, that she uh, worked at Arley Gardens. So if she worked in a garden, how is this then reflected in in this artwork? Well, she worked at the gatehouse, but she was around the garden as well. Right, right. Uh, And you can see the vibrancy of the colors. Uh, okay. So certainly, yeah, inspired by the colors of the garden, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, the organic shapes, maybe the, the nature. Um, yeah. And I guess yeah. she was essentially, because she worked at the gatehouse, was like the face of the Arley Gardens, which is a, a very important garden and uh, public area in in Wilmington uh, and so she was the welcoming factor huh. interesting she must have been a really interesting person I, you know I, I think just just from this um, particular work of art so again um, Billy just based on what you were saying then perhaps being an outsider artist when we we're talking about the materials that she used she would probably just use as you were saying that whatever she had around so whatever she probably she had, had it looks like maybe a paper bag or something that she yeah. you know recycled and um used and um used basically just colored pencil and crayon um to mm -hmm. create these um these these fantastic uh colorful drawings um it, it, she says that um she uh, and I think you refer to this in in a way in a way, Billy. She she um, she kind of get she gets her um, inspiration from her dreams, and it is kind of a spiritual, religious kind of experience from her dreams. So, if this were something you all um, saw in a dream, how would it make you feel? I think hopeful, inspired, hopeful. inspired. What is it that, that you find um, hopeful about this, Marie? For me, I gravitate towards bright colors. And so seeing all the variety of colors is something that inspires um, the hope of what nature is. And to be able to know that nature is uh, reflected in what we do in our own lives. And so that's why it makes it hopeful for me. And um, in, in, and in talking about, uh, when I was suggested about royalty, um, the colors of, the, of, of blue and colors of purple are those strong colors that she has woven into it. So that's why I keep seeing the royalty part of it. And, and this may be going a little bit more fine tuned, but that section below the nose, um, all the way to the, um, the formation of the um, what would be maybe the whale's tail looks like a um, formation of a mermaid looking ah. from the back. Uh -huh. Yeah, for sure. I haven't, I have not heard that before, but I'm not going to be able to get that out of my mind now when I look at it because <laughs> you know how, like, when you look at something and then somebody points something out, this happens to me all the time on tours and somebody will point something like it's like a, now I'll always see that. Someone else um, early on in the chat um, box had pointed out at the very top, um, right where those sort of things that Barbara described as antennae in the very first mm -hmm. comment, they, they said that looks like a bird. Can you yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah sort of, you, know, you see the eyes and the beak, it's sort of, you're looking down mm -hmm. on it maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of nature in here and I, I can't help but think, as Billy said, that she had to have been um, influenced by uh, what she saw in, in her um, work in the gardens. Um, it, and a lot of interpretations of some people were looking at this as kind of literally a physical, you know, woman's physical biology and, and birthing and Others were looking at it as, as um, you know, butterflies and whales and birds. And um, so again, another one that uh, I don't think has, um, you know, anything from the artist that would give us information on what this actually means, other than that it, it did probably come from one of her dreams. But I do have a quote um, from the artist, from um, Emini, and she says, 
when I get through with them, meaning her drawings, I have to look at them like everybody else. They're just mm -hmm. as strange to me as they are to anybody else. <laughs> and I, you know, so, you know, some of the outsider artists, are, I think, have, are very clearly trying to communicate something specific and others just ha have this inspiration from their dreams or from the spirit and, um, and are just feel that, um, that drive that artists have to, to express that and communicate it and, and then look at it and then it's open to us to, um, to interpret. Well, so. the whale's tail, you know, Arley Garden sits right at Wrightsville Beach. So it's right near the water. And so that probably those, those whales that are breaching, you know, you so can, you can probably see those tails. And, yeah, a lot of water, a lot of bird life. Yeah, yeah. Any other comments on this one before we move on? Any other ideas? Anything? Um, I'm going to check the chat box again. Um, Someone said they wish they could doodle like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very organic, like I was dreaming. Um, there are people seeing a bird. Yeah, great. So again, this is this is also one of my favorites. This had been um, exhibited before the um, renovation of the museum, and I just loved it. I keep going back to it, so I was glad to see it on our website so I could use it again. All right, Christy. And again, this is untitled, which is even less helpful in trying to figure out what it means. Um, is, uh, Doris, is Minnie yes. Evans still alive? Is she? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. No. But she worked from 1940 to the 1980s. Yeah, I think she died in 1987. Mm -hmm. All right, here's another one, a little bit different from what we've looked at before. This is a painting. So you take a few seconds and look at it. Another woman artist. So think about it in the context of women. And what might make this um, look to you like something a, a woman would have created, if, if at all. Well, I, I feel a lot of serenity when I see that. And I think that women sometimes do have that ability to uh, just step back and take deep breaths and stay calm in the face of turmoil. And it just feels like she is expressing that sense of taking a deep breath and looking at the beauty around her. Okay, what is it um, about this painting that gives you, what did the artist do to give you that sense of serenity? Well, I think it, um, I think a lot has to do with the, both the background and the foreground. I think that beautiful deep blue, but a little softened because of the distance in the background. And then that the very stillness, you know, there's not, mm -hmm. it's not choppy. There's only a small amount of ripples in the lake so that that calmness and smoothness of the water to me uh, conveys that sense of, of calm, still, uh, sublime sort of feeling. My eye is drawn to the red. I mean, I see the mountains, the trees, the reflections sort of muted, but you get this intensity where you see that in the center there, with the, 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 con the red contrast there. Yeah, so the composition itself, the, um, the, the brightness of the, the red and, um, and the fact that it's, that red is also reflected in the water and it's right in the center uh, of the painting kind of really grabs your eye. What else? Oh, wow. Looking back wow. at is the colors. The, the, on the left, where all there's a kind of unexplained burst of colors in the water, and I find that very captivating. Okay, so it's it's on the left in the lower third there. I wish, you know, that's the, the downside of being on Zoom. I can't point <laughs> to it, but maybe Christy, can you point to that? Um, I think she's talking about that red in the, the water. Um, yeah, Reflection. is that where you're, that what you're referring to there? It, I yeah. just keep looking back at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
And there's a little bit of red, it looks like, on the above that on the tree. So I don't, it's hard to say what that is, whether it's a reflection. Gary says uh, leaves on the surface of the water. So leaves that could have fallen from that tree. Mm -hmm. I was going to add that um, the accessibility to the water, there's not a cliff. It seems like it's an easy step down, but also too, um, no restrictions. It, it's, it's maybe a little bit hard to see by where the grass area is behind the trees, but there doesn't seem to be any restriction there, like it's an open meadow, open field before you get yeah. to the mountain. Yeah, a meadow that just takes you right into that body of water. So no restriction being no uh, geographical restriction as well as no physical man-made barrier to get to that area. And yet there's no people, there's no animals. You don't know, see birds or squirrels or any kind of in the sky or in the trees or in the water and there's no one fishing or boating. It's, it's just what it is there, without any people or distractions or um, wildlife. Yeah, Gary adds, and no trash. <laughs> I yeah. think in the lower left-hand corner, well, it's midway, uh, behind the trees, through the trees, there's a possibility that it might look like there might be some houses off in the distance. Yeah, can everyone see that? Christy, can you point to that? It looks like maybe there are some structures back there toward the left. Yeah. Looks like yeah. there might be right some there. It's sort of just, just kind of a suggestion of some kind of a structure. <laughs> there was a question that I'll throw out to all of you because I thought it was an interesting one. Where's the artist standing when she's when she's painted this? Well, I didn't see it as a lake. I saw it as a little river or a stream, and I think she's on mm -hmm. the other other side. On the shore? Uh, stream, yeah, and uh, setting up her, her easel there. Okay, so a small body of water. Uh, someone says she's getting her feet wet. Somebody else says maybe she's in a boat um, on the water. Mm. Yeah. Well, it is I'm an interesting perspective when you've got that water right in front of you like that. I'm just struck by the color, the blue that's almost purple that she uses for the tr in the tree trunk, and then the reflection in the water, uh, and then her use, or yes, her use. We know this is a female. Um, the use of pink that she splashes all all over the composition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, does everybody notice that blue in the tree? I think that is a little bit. It's interesting because it's not what you would typically expect in an, uh, from an artist painting in a realistic manner anyway, a tree trunk. Exactly. So, yeah. The rest of it looks fairly realistic, but that does not to me. <clears throat> um, Barbara Benish says the technique is amazing. And um, Barbara, I don't know whether you want to unmute yourself and talk a little bit more about that or chat a little bit about what specifically uh, you, that, that, that's really um, intriguing to you about the technique or anyone else that might want to comment on that. Well, it's so realistic and your ability to feel that you're in that space because of the realism um, and the quality of the work actually that makes it look um, as though you could be there yourself. Yeah and if you were in that space what would it feel like to be there? Well I think it would be also serene as the other person said and cool and um that you would hear the sound of the water because I also felt that it was a river or a stream and that there's some movement along the shore and you might hear the sound of the water. Yeah, yeah, so kind of a, a, a place that you'd like to be, a peaceful place. Yes. Beautiful, peaceful is... Um, I don't necessarily... comment I see. <laughs> Patty? I, because of the red splash right in the center. To mm -hmm. me, I mean, it's, I, I like this painting a lot, but the, for the peacefulness, I don't, I don't sense that. Not with that splash of red right in the center. I think, mm. I think a little jar, it's jarring. So it's jarring. Mm -hmm. I would say, speaking to the question of it being a male or female artist and how it lends itself to being female, is the softness of the overall artwork to me um, how she's using the brush the brush strokes even the mountains it's everything seems soft to me 
And to me, soft is a, is a feminine trait. Yeah. So the soft in terms of the color choice, as well as the, uh, the way that the paint is, is applied. Uh, there was one comment about, you know, the, the, that we just came from that smoke filled stuffy room with the card players um, a little while ago. And, and now we're in this uh, very different kind of, um, kind of setting. You know, let me see if I can pick up anything else on the on the chat. Oh, um, for those of you uh, like me who live in the North Asheville area, someone said it reminds them of kayaking on Beaver Lake. Oh yes. Uh, Gary says uh, it feels like the start of fall. Um, Patty um, uh, points out that to her, it it the style looks impressionistic, and in fact, um, the artist this was painted in 1916. Or 1915, rather, and um, the the artist uh, Harriet Randall Rumis was a, a pretty prominent uh, landscape painter in her day. She uh, she was always trying to perfect her work. So she was even a student um, when she was in her 50s. Um, she was like the youngest student in her art class, but she she did have a, a lot of training. She did a lot of exhibitions around the country and around the region. Um, she is from Connecticut, spent most of her adult life in Massachusetts. So while this to me, before I um, did a little research on it, uh, I thought it was um, uh, a painting of somewhere here because of the mm -hmm. blue in the mountains. I thought, oh, Blue Ridge Mountains, but uh, probably not. I couldn't find any indication that she uh, did any painting here. Um, but she, uh, she did uh, like to like the style of the Impressionists um, from uh, that time and slightly before that time. She did not like the trend toward abstract art. And so she had even formed an association of painters who wanted to paint in the um, realistic art style. Uh, someone else pointed out, if you notice, this was given in honor of Dorothy Hamill. Doris. Hmm. Doris, like you're frozen. Lost Doris for some Let's reason. Let's give her just a second. We made it this far, Doris. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not sure exactly what she was going to say, but I did just indicate in the chat box um, in response to Linda's uh, question that, in fact, it is a different Dorothy Hamill, uh, Linda. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Micah Jean says Dot a Hamill local was paper. a local oh, okay. patron of the art. Oh. Hmm. So it looks you know, like it's, go ahead. It, it's, it, it's interesting to me that uh, she was a contemporary of uh, Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, Everybody right. was a contemporary of Georgia O'Keeffe. She <laughs> lived so long. Everybody was. <laughs> Good point, Janet. <laughs> but, but, and, and she did. She was much more of an academic artist than an experimenter during. But I still see indications of the impressionist breaststroke. Yes. Uh, in in her work. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Christy, can I make a suggestion to you yeah, for yeah. next time? And I certainly hope that you do do this next time. Mm -hmm. um, but when you put the, the images into your PowerPoint, mm -hmm. if, if you could, um, well, on my, my screen, everybody it comes up differently on everybody else's, but on my screen, the, the images of the people here, and I did make them smaller, so they're not really big, but they still covered some of the image. So if you could move the images over, not in this, this version, because this has got your text and all that, but just when you're showing the image, yeah, if you could just move it over a little bit, and that way the images of the people won't cover. Because I do enjoy seeing the people who were speaking, because to, to see them speaking, I think, is really mm -hmm. nice and adds a lot to, to it. To move over a little to the left, Janet? Right. Well, in my, in, on my screen, the images of the people come up on the left. I think it's different in, uh, in different, you know, people's yeah, screens. So you you can have. adjust that, actually. So Yeah, right. You can yeah. push them over. I push them over to the right. So if the image had just been a little bit more to the left, then I could have seen the full image and, and wouldn't have to make the people so small. But that's just me. You know, you can forget about that. <laughs> just, 
I just thought it was. Yeah, uh, everybody's screen is, is different and people set up their screens in different ways. Yeah. I know that uh, Doris was almost done saying what she was going to say and she has texted me and said that she has completely lost her internet connection. Oh. <laughs> but luckily, you know, it didn't happen at 12.05. It happened at 12.55. And so we had the great gift of being with Doris uh, for the majority of the hour. Yeah, um, does anybody is, have any last questions or comments before we wrap up today? Well, I did just want to say one more thing, which is I'm in New Jersey. I'm not, uh, but I do have good friends in Asheville and, and my husband and I come there a bit and we always go to the museum. So uh, this was great. And I hope you do more of them. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. And thank you so much for the, the work that you put in on it. Absolutely, Janet. And yes, um, we do do Slow Art Fridays every Friday at 12 o'clock. Um, all of the June, uh, actually the <laughs> remaining May and all of the June topics have been put onto our website. Um, they fill up pretty fast and since we know that everybody's schedule sort of changes from day to day, uh, we start taking reservations up to a week in advance for the individual Fridays. So you might want to head over to our website and see what's coming up uh, next week as well as uh, looking ahead in the future to see if anything piques your fancy. So in other words, you limit you limit the number of people that can come in so that we can Correct. have the so that we can have a conversation right. that's not sort of chaotic. Yeah, for Slow Art Fridays. Um, yeah. For those who are museum members, we do have our Wednesday museum programs. We have uh, on the second Tuesday our book discussion, um, and then uh, on third 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 Thursdays, we have what we like to call fun programs. Um, so last night we had craft beer and trivia, and that was a hoot. The, um, the video is now up on the museum's website. Uh, we're off, also offering digital photography classes through the summer, and uh, the June class is already full, if you can believe it. So yeah, we're keeping ourselves very busy, Janet. Uh, check out uh, our calendar to see if anything sounds fun to you. I will. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, for absolutely. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Keep an eye out on your email uh, for my evaluation that will be coming shortly. I hope everyone has a really fantastic Memorial Day weekend. Maybe the clouds will go away and we'll get some sunshine. Take care and see you next bye -bye. time. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.